I'm Helen Duncan. Today is 22nd of October 2020 and I'm here with Liam Devlin, CEO of PRFI, to talk about challenges and solutions for millimetre wave packaging. Liam, first of all, why do you need to package devices for millimetre waves? Well, that's a, a good question to start with. When you put an IC into a package, it gets bigger. You add a lot of parasitics, which can potentially spoil the performance. And the people who do the packaging won't pay it. Now, we have here a little example of an IC we designed and had packaged. This is a, a standard QFN plastic package, very popular at microwave frequencies. And you can see the die in the center there is significantly smaller than the package. You can see the top side and the bottom side of the package showing, and that's a five millimeter by five millimeter package. So the real benefit to having an SMT package, that surface mount technology, is ease of handling for the assembly facility when it's incorporated into a product and also it's much better suited to high volume, low cost manufacturing capabilities. And what are the main challenges you face at these frequencies compared to lower microwave frequencies? It's really the increased effect of the parasitics. So you have a bond wire inductance that is 30 times more uh, difficult at 30 gigahertz than at 1 gigahertz. You have the effect of the dielectric material on top of the package. That's both a, a, a loss effect and a dielectric loading effect. You have the physical size of the package itself, the package lead frame, which can cause resonance issues at millimeter wave frequencies when it becomes electrically significant. And of course, you have the PCB itself on which the package part would sit. That forms a part of the overall performance of that package that I see and is something you need to take into account. So you must account for all of these things in order to get a part that works well. So could you tell me a bit more about the different types of packaging that can be used at millimetre wave frequencies and what their individual pros and cons? Yeah, um, so the most common one is the over-moulded plastic and a lot of microwave ICs go into the over-moulded plastic QFN, like the one I showed earlier. And this is a 28 gigahertz PA for 5G applications. And this is in a 4mm by 4mm over-moulded plastic QFN package. And it's solder attached to a PCB. And um, this sort of package we've used to certainly beyond 30 gigahertz. As you go higher in frequency, we sometimes use a uh, cavity plastic package. Now this is an example of a, a 39 gigahertz PA in a uh, cavity package. And you can see it looks exactly the same. Um, in terms of the cost, this is a more expensive package than the over-moulded package. And there is some tooling charges associated, but it's still a low-cost package. And you have the benefits that the air cavity removes some of the dielectric and loss loading impacts of that moulding compound. Moving on beyond the plastic packaging, we can have uh, laminate packages, for example, and we've designed quite a few custom laminate packages. This is an example of a dual channel 26 gigahertz PA. So there are two ICs sitting inside this package, and that's a custom design package, so we can define the interface within the package, optimising its RF performance. And really, of course, the performance you're looking for is the end performance of the package.
packaged IC on the PCB. Now I've got another example of this style of package here and I'm going to show you inside of this. This is a, a 26 gigahertz FEM. It contains three ICs, an LNA, a switch and a PA. But what we've also been able to do is print some simple filters on the base of the package itself. That's a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter package. And we can see here the top side of that package and the internal part of the package. And you can see that after the LNA, we've got a coupled line printer, filter, which we've curved in order to save space. After the PA, there's a little harmonic filter. You can also see here that the ICs sit in a cavity inside the package, and this helps reduce the bond wire inductance. We've used this style of package effectively up to about 44 gigahertz, so it's quite a useful technology. And we also are doing some work with flip chip mounting of ICs within packages. Now this has the benefit that you virtually remove the bond wire inductance, but they do come with their own issues to resolve. And we've also done work with antenna in package solutions, which is sort of the, the ultimate in uh, high level integration. What are the particular design and simulation techniques that you use to get the best out of package devices at these frequencies? Well, the real key is to co-simulate the IC, the bond interface, the package itself, and the PCB onto which the part will ultimately be mounted, or at least a representative PCB onto which the part is likely to be mounted. We've actually got another video in preparation where we go into a little bit more detail about the techniques. But we use ADS from Keysight. The IC we fully EM simulate in momentum. And then the bond wires, in the first instance, we um, simulate with the bond wire model within ADS. Um, but we also have been using the FEM simulator and that allows you to simulate the um, bond wire, the bond pad on the package, the interface through the package and the PCB itself. So that, that really gives you a nice complete solution for that interface. Um, in terms of other techniques we use, we, we tend to adopt custom lead frames uh, from millimeter wave designs um, and that allows you to join some of the leads within the plastic package to the diap attach paddle in the package itself and that can also improve and enhance the performance at millimeter wave frequencies.